uh, for holiday, you know, what we bought on uh, Black Friday. But as we can craft our identity online and seek the information of others, sometimes we scrub ourselves to the point that we are not true to who we really are. So we, we have selfies that have become very popular nomenclature of you taking your own image. And those of you who listen to the news today, uh, President Obama is getting a great deal of coverage for having taken a selfie um, during Nelson Mandela's a funeral. But selfie has worked its way into you know the Oxford Dictionary. It is part of the lexicon of modern times. So as people kind of portray themselves and are thinking very much about their identity and how they want to show themselves, we also know that there's a loss of authenticity. And this isn't just an American phenomenon. This is worldwide. Our, our data shows you know, this sentiment that we aren't exactly our truest self when we're uh, publishing um, who we are. Um, so how do we deal with this? I mean, if, if we're addicted to this idea that I want to portray myself in the best light possible, and if you affirm what you see, then I'm only going to continue to scrub continue to show you my best shiny self um, to re reinforce my own ego. How does that play out? I mean, what does that mean for us in the marketplace? Why do you think we're so drawn to the validation of others? So let's start with Chris. <laughs> Have you seen that um, one of the best-selling cameras in China is made by Casio? It's a little portable camera. It's $700. It's an expensive product. Uh, but its unique attribute is it has a lens that makes your eyes bigger. Right? So if you do a selfie, you can get like anime Japanese cartoon eyes. Right? And so this has become one of the most popular cameras in, in China because these young women, they want to project this story about how they are sort of anime characters. So it kind of sucks into the bottom jaw, it bugs out the eyes, and you look like an anime character. So why would they do that? Because to your point, it's inauthentic, right? But I think to their point, it's just another story that I can attach my own identity to. It's not that complicated, it's just a game, it's fairly trivial, it's not as serious as perhaps philosophers and cultural anthropologists might make it. So I think that the reason, a lot of this is, is not new behavior, whether or not you choose to wear a, re a leather jacket or decide not to wear a sport coat, these are all methods by which you craft narrative around yourself, and in social media, uh, we're just extending that in, in a dramatic way. So I think there's a lot of uh, scariness around it if you listen to old anthropologists. But if you talk to young anthropologists, they're less anxious about it. But it's just a normal human behavior to me. Okay. Well, this is closely tied to kind of this idea about image, where we spend our time, to our final trend. And we're really talking about the tension between FOMO and JOMO, FOMO being the fear of missing out. So I, it probably doesn't need a lot of description, but we find that younger Americans are almost twice as likely as older Americans to feel like they're missing out on something when they see pictures of other people having a great time um, on some social media platform. I think this is fairly timeless. I remember being a young person looking for the best party on New Year's Eve and always feeling like I was, in, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you don't know if you've made the right decision until the following Monday, the following you know, holiday where kind of people share their experiences. Um, we also know that we are uncomfortable with being alone. So we, we, uh, we look at our cell phones 150 times a day. And 80% of Americans tell you that they use their cell phone as a crutch to escape loneliness, that it's becoming this tool. On the flip side, though, there's hope. There is this joy of missing out. The people that are putting real effort and energy to say, we've got to spend time you know, rethinking this. There is a new kind of medical diagnosis. Um, it's the phantom vibration. You know, and there are people that imagine that their phone is vibrating, that there's a call waiting for them, that there's a text, there's an email, and there is no electronic signal. But we've become so accustomed to anticipating those calls that it's a sign of anxiety about the way that we live our life. And nearly 90% of all college undergrads in 2012 said that they felt some sort of phantom vibration. 
Um, this number applies also to hospital workers that would tell you the same thing. 94% of Americans agree that they feel some sort of anxiety or disconnect when they're disconnected. One trend report refers to it, refers to it as online oxygen. So that when I'm without my connection, um, I, it's almost as if you've cut off my lifeline. So the joy of missing out is getting back to the basics and saying, we've got to stay in the present. We've got to learn to appreciate what's in front of us. We have um, two examples here of the stealth, cell phone stacking. So when you and your friends or your family go out to eat, you stack all your phones in the middle of the table. And the first person to blink or grab that phone has to pick up the tab. Um, there is a, a more interesting one that's institutionalized by a company um, in Europe that says if you stand in front of one of their vending machines, and don't move for three minutes, they will reward you with a beer. <laughs> this about, you know, let's get, let's slow down, let's stop all of this craziness. So very quickly, are you FOMO or JOMO? This is a tricky one for a Facebook guy to answer. Uh, I do um, enjoy my, um, my Jobo moments, um, certainly, especially when you have when you have young kids, you want to make sure that you know I try to be present and try not to be checking the phone, and um, so it is important to me. Disconnecting, I, I do enjoy. I think even before the internet, I liked disconnecting personally. Like I just need some to go to the movies myself, no problem. Like <laughs> to disconnect from people. So um, that being said, I also love the benefits that this all brings too and that you can connect and see friends and see what they're up to or where they are or share an old story or so I sort of go in waves I don't um, I would say I'm a, a little bit of both um, that's probably not the answer you like right I, I think it's probably the answer for everyone though yeah. you know there are there are moments that you can afford to be Jomo and other moments that you can't um, you know, and, I, I, and I think it'll be interesting to see how the younger generation this plays because we we all grew up without this in our developing years um, and sort of adopting it as it as the innovations came about. Um, these younger kids are growing up with it just that's all they know. Um, so right from the get-go they have cell phones, they're connecting, they're taking pictures. So it'll be interesting years down the road uh, whether they even can comprehend this connected, right? So. Well, one of the favorite punishments in the Conway household is no screen time. You know, is to say, okay, you know, you clean that bedroom where you don't get any screens. Right. So, what about you, Debbie? Well, I'm sure you know I'm obsessively FOMO, but um, I have been working really hard on this, and what I find is it takes a massive amount of discipline um, to not think that you can do both, and to not have it in a meeting, and as my husband would say, could you please put that down and speak to me? Um, and I find myself doing it still, where I'm, oh yeah, just a second, yeah, 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 yeah. you know. Ridiculous, right? And so we're, we have quite a thing going on about that now. Um, and I turn off on Saturdays, I really try not to pick up the Blackberry. I try, I really do, and sometimes I'm successful. But I think that's part of it, is really, you know, trying to work to lose that anxiety of, oh my God, it's like, I'm so important. I gotta make sure I'm getting all these text messages and so forth, and certainly the business will survive. You know, if I'm not answering, I mean, really inside corporations, you feel like if you don't answer an email instantaneously, it's gonna be an issue. So I think hopefully we're gonna all learn to bring down the sine waves a little bit. I think that has actually broad implications to the nature of work and how that'll play out. Chris, FOMO or JOMO? FOMO. FOMO, okay. So um, I would like to invite our audience to ask questions of our esteemed panelists. We have